here is problem one of the 2023 International Math Olympiad. It's a number theory problem. Determine all composite integers n is greater than 1 that satisfy the following property if d1, d2 to dk are all the positive divisors of n with dn as 1 less than d2 less than etc to dk being n then di divides di plus 1 plus di plus 2 for every i between 1 and k minus 2. So it's asking about the divisors or the factors of this number n. And they have to satisfy this property that if we list the divisors in order, then one divisor divides the sum of the next two. So it helps to look at an example. If we take a composite number like 12, the factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12 in ascending order. Now, to check this property, we start from the smallest divisor and test if 1 divides the sum of 2 and 3. Of course, that's true because 1 divides every integer. Next, we're testing if 2 divides 3 plus 4, and we fail there because 7 is not a multiple of 2. So, n equals 12 fails our test, and we need to look for other composite numbers. If we were to try n equals 25, well, that's 5 squared, so the only divisors are 1, 5, and 25 itself. Of course, this does pass the test because 1 uh, does divide 5 plus 25, and there's no other divisors to check. So from this, we can uh, know that any n that is the square of a prime would always work. And we can even go further because imagine we had the cube of a prime or any power of any prime say, for example, 32, which is 2 to the power of 5. The divisors are in order 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. In each case, we can see that um, each divisor is going to divide the sum of the next two. So we're fine. And in general, if we have 1, p, p squared, etc., up to p to the n, well, each divisor will divide um, all larger divisors, so of course it will divide the sum of the next two. So that's pretty good. We've proven that if n is any power of any prime, then it will satisfy this condition. Uh, but are there any other types of numbers that would also work? Well, let's try if we just had, say, two prime factors, say like 15, which is 3 times 5. Listing the divisors in order, we have 1, 3, 5, and 15. And it's going to fail because um, 3 does not divide 5 plus 15. To take another example, say 7 by 11, which is 77. The divisors are 1, 7, 11, and 77. Again, it fails at the same point because 7 does not divide 11 plus 77. I wonder if you can see why in general... If we have two divisors p and q, this is not going to work. Let's look at 7 by 11 again. Uh, 7, of course, divides 77, because 77 is the number itself. Um, but 7 cannot divide 11, because 11 is prime. So this is the source of the contradiction, because if 7 were to divide the sum, uh, it would need to divide into 11. So in general, if we have uh, divisors p and q, then listing them in order, we'd have 1, p, q, and p, q. If the sum q plus p, q were a multiple of p, say k times p, then that would mean q would also need to be a multiple of p, which cannot happen because p and q are prime. So that's good as well. We've ruled out numbers of that form, p, q, that have exactly two prime factors. So once we've realized this, we're probably getting pretty confident that those prime powers we identified before are in fact the only solutions to this problem. But we still need to rule out uh, all other numbers. So we've ruled out those numbers that are a product of exactly two distinct primes, but we haven't, but we haven't ruled out uh, numbers that have more different prime factors like P, Q, R, S, etc., or uh, numbers that have repeated prime factors, say P to the q to the n, q to the m, r to the etc. So first let's look at numbers with multiple different prime factors, um, but each to the power 1. So for example, let's take a number like 30, which is 2 by 3 by 5. 
we list out the divisors, we get 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. To test whether this number satisfies the condition in our problem, uh, 1 of course divides 2 plus 3, 2 does divide 3 plus 5, uh, 3 does not divide 5 plus 6, so we fail a test there. Um, but in order to find something that's going to be able to be generalized to all composite numbers, uh, let's keep going and, and just keep completing the test for all the other numbers. So uh, 5 does not divide 6 plus 10, 6 does not divide 10 plus 15, and 10 does not divide 15 plus 30. And it's actually that those, those last three numbers that is something, contains something that it can be generalized to all composite numbers. And if we look at 10 and 30, they're actually both even numbers, whereas 15 is odd. So again, we get that problem where uh, 10 divides into 30. So to divide into the sum of 15 plus 30, it would need to divide into 15. That does not happen, so we fail the test. And now rather than talking about even or odd, in order to generalize, um, really the key thing is that 30 is divisible by that smallest prime, which in this case is 2. And 10 is also divisible by 2, but 15 is not. Because remember, when we list the factors in ascending order like this, they're always going to occur in pairs. And this is really the key to this problem. I think it's like just how in elementary school you, you listed factors and paired them up. 2 by 15 is 30, 3 by 10 is 30, and 5 by 6 is 30. So if we go back to the notation of the problem and call our divisors uh, d1, d2, d3, etc., that the largest number is n, the second largest is n over d2, the third largest is n over d3. And of course, n over d1, n over d2, n over d3, these are all integers uh, because d1, d2 are all factors. And if d2, d3 are distinct primes, we're going to have that issue where d2, that smallest prime, uh, does divide into n and it does divide into n over d3. But because it does not divide into n over d2, okay, it's been cancelled out, that means that third largest prime, n over d3, cannot divide into the sum of the two largest. And there's a contradiction. And that contradiction would apply for most composite numbers. So the only time it would not apply is if d1 and d2 are not distinct primes. So for example, you could have your smallest uh, divisors as 1, 2, 4 and 8, and then you could have a larger prime factor like 11 or 13. So in that case, let's call our divisors in order 1, p, p squared, etc., up to pk, and then we've got a new prime factor q. And we can see pretty easily that that is going to fail a test because uh, pk plus q is not going to be a multiple of um, p to the k minus 1 because here q is prime. So we've ruled out all other composite numbers except for those powers of primes we saw before. That completes the solution, and although it's definitely not the most elegant or direct solution, it shows how we can build up understanding step by step using examples, making conjectures, and finally reaching a proof.